Dealing with stress and burnout as a mother. Hi, I'm Lauren Selby. And I'm Jamie Selby. And we've got three beautiful kids, Jackson, Alara and Tobias. And we're currently travelling the world. We're trying to show you how to live the ultimate life by living life the way that you want to. We've come here to this beautiful place. How can you get stressed around an environment like this? How can you get stressed? It's so peaceful, it's so tranquil. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready! Woohoo! We came to the beach today to do a bit of filming, but we didn't bring childcare, so the kids were messing around and playing up, and Jamie was off then saying, you know, we're taking turns, I'll do a bit of filming, you do a bit of filming, and he's doing it completely different to how I would do it, so best laid plans and all. So there's a breakdown in communication, and then external judgment kicked in, so he's off doing what he wants to do. You just stay over there, because I don't, I, yeah. Whilst I'm left, with the kids screaming at the beach we're on a really nice beach it's like a private beach you do have to pay to get on this beach in the summer fortunately we're in the winter but you know these people have come here to relax to chill out to get their self-care in and my kids are screaming all three of them running in different directions like one's going in the water can't swim one's climbing up the side of some stairs and the other one's like just screaming and I'm thinking to myself Oh my God, these people have come here to chill out and my kids are screaming. So straight away, the external judgment's going in there. Like, what are they gonna think of me? You know, it's not fair. I should probably just pack my kids up. And I even said, let's just pack the kids up and get them in the van, give them the iPad. Because I couldn't cope in that moment. But actually, it's really key because we all get worried about external judgment. And we all worry about what somebody else thinks of us. And you can't just click your fingers and then there's no worry because that's not how life works. But what you can do is work every single day on thinking about what's right for you and your family. And if that's not right for other people, then it, you know, you got to let it go because it's only going to upset you or hold you back. So we're talking about this right now as Alara's crying. Um, she's fine, she's with Jamie, but it's that time of day and you know the kids want our attention or they want to just chill out and we shouldn't worry about what other people think because we are good parents, we are doing everything we can to make our kids happy. We've we're started on this journey to the ultimate life, trying to find our path to live life the way we want to. <laughs> And, you know, we have kids and ignoring them is not what we want to do. So, I don't mind, you know, I've got to feed my child, she still has breast. So I don't mind about feeding my child at the beach. I don't mind about feeding my child in front of camera because this is how I want to feed my child and she's not having it much anymore, but I shouldn't worry about what you're thinking about me feeding. You shouldn't worry about what somebody else thinks that you do. If it's good for you and it's good for your family and it's working, then do what makes you happy. That is the whole idea though, isn't it? That's life, it is, it's always struggle, but there is always a solution. And when we're in the switched off mindset and we're like, no, I'm having a bad day, I don't want to be at the beach, I don't want to be left with the three kids. Jamie's off doing what he's doing and I'm not getting what I want. But actually, when I stop and just take a breath and you kind of have, life's all about the ups and downs. Every single day we're going to have ups and downs. It's never going to be the best day ever all the time. Halfway through the best day ever, you know, as a woman, you could just start your period and then it's always all the way down again you know if you go to the beach you plan and then you come on your period it's like, ah, what do i do there's always a workaround there's always a solution but there's always going to be hardships and it's how you decide you're going to deal with it so for me you know i'm a life coach but it doesn't mean my life's perfect it means i try bloody hard and i've got good tools and techniques to make it better and I help other people do that. So let's take today's situation. It's just kind of gone downhill because what I planned to do wasn't what we what we did. Um, you know, trying to sit together and do a filming on a few topics that we thought, you know, people are sending questions in now. So they're like, oh, can you explain how you deal with this or how do you do that or how would you do the other? So we're really excited to share that and say, well, this is how we did it. But actually, 
we can't we can't share that together because the whole idea of this is we don't have childcare you know and when we do have it it's hit and miss we've had some childcare whilst we've been here in turkey we've tried three different nannies all been absolutely lovely but none of them really worked out to, to be with us more than a couple of days and that's how we had it in the uk as well and it wasn't because you know they don't like us or we don't like them it's because that's life you know we haven't found a solution that works for us and we want to spend that time with the kids but not all the time because you need that time on your own you need that time to you know fill up your own cup to avoid stress and burnout and you need that time to just be present with yourself and if that means like you know they've been in the sea they've done the bits that i don't want to do but we've done it because it's pleased everybody then we can sit grab some food calm down and i can think about you know what i'm grateful for and just be present in the moment pardon may i have another minute why do you want a minute mm. yeah and then then what what shall we do next then, then I'm going to build that. <coughs> what is it? It doesn't stick to you. We you open you. Oh. But that's the point. You know, you can't always have a routine. You know, you can't always say, my kids are going to go to sleep at this time or wake up at this time. Sometimes it just don't happen like that, especially with the little ones, because there's always a phase. They develop, they grow in. Um, nap times change, nap times drop. Jackson dropped his naps, but, you know, when we're out about and doing things like this, he still needs a nap once a week or maybe even once a day if we've had a full-on day. He's three and a half, but his little body is growing, his brain's growing, and yesterday, you know, we had a day at the market and then we went out to um, a different beach where we were looking for turtles, but we got in the car, we hadn't even eaten, we were heading back to get some food, and he crashed out and he slept all night. Absolutely exhausted. But he slept. Your sticker, there it is. Jackson slept last night from half past six till he didn't wake up till 10 o'clock this morning. So, you know, I'm lucky that when mine do go to sleep, if I can get them to go to sleep, they will sleep 11 or 12 hours. Um, and on this journey, we've met a sleep specialist and she's amazing at getting her kids to sleep and she teaches people how to build that routine and, you know, what the right sleep pattern is. But my kids don't fall into that routine all the time and when we're traveling we're losing hours so you know let's say jackson used to go to bed at seven half seven toby eight half eight because i get an extra hour with him then we had this one in the mix and alara would go to bed between half six and seven so it was like put alara down get her to sleep put jackson down get him to sleep get toby down get him to sleep so i'd get like half an hour with each of them where it was just like one-on-one -on -one. but it's not worked here because one probably because we haven't tried to make it work because we've got a different life but we moved through three hours of time zone in one go so actually the seven eight o'clock was 10 11 o'clock and everyone was like well that's crazy you can't get your kids to bed at half 10 but sometimes you if you're moving through time zones if you try and you know edge it back a little bit or forward a little bit that works if it's a long period of time but if you're traveling through 11 countries in four months don't do that we just literally drove from portugal to turkey so we lost three hours and we have slowly edged that back so we would now get into bed instead of 11 they will get into bed about between eight and nine which we felt was like a massive win but you know, then you have one of those days where they <laughs> they have one of those days where they'll go to sleep really early and sleep all the way through, or they won't get to bed till midnight and they'll wake up at seven. But it's not all the time. You know, we're not doing these bad habits all the time. We do have good habits and it's about keeping those good habits, but also being flexible enough to say, we've had a bad day, let's let it go and start tomorrow as a new day with you know the good habits in mind so give yourself grace <laughs> join us on our adventure as we inspire you to live your ultimate life please like and subscribe <laughs>